to record. There we go. Okay. Um, there's Zoom has this very bad habit of putting black rectangles up on my screen from various windows. And please, if you see a giant black rectangle on my screen blocking things, please let me know so that um, you know I'm I'm alerted to it. Um, okay. So what I want to look at is the set of slides. Okay. Um, so we're going to be talking about models where infections uh, remain uh, present, uh, either because they recirculate or because they um, they they go into uh, there. There's an ongoing population which feeds them fuel. So we've been talking about um, these models with closed populations, um, populations where we don't have births, deaths, or immigration. And there's no recirculation. An example is shown here. Uh, we have the SIR model. Um, the uh, infections uh, rise rapidly. They reach a crest. Uh, uh, what, what is the condition at this top point here? What equals what? Can anyone say? Inflow equals outflow. Inflow equals outflow. How about at an individual level? Each person infects how many people before they recover at this one? At this one. Mm -hmm. um, so that means the effective what equals what? The effective begins with R. R naught. Yeah, R naught. That's the effective reproductive number. It's actually called R star. Um, and we noted that it declines when the outflow is greater than the inflow, or each person infects fewer than one infected before they recover. Um, now, this infection goes towards a so-called steady state, a uh, sort of condition in which it's in equilibrium, which is the same at once it started. Um, uh, it goes towards a state where infection dies out, and, and susceptibles do not die out. Mark me this, because it could be on your final exam. In fact, I'd be surprised if it's not in your final exam. Susceptibles don't die out here. Um, they go down perhaps to a low level, but they don't die out. Um, just like unburned firewood is always in your fireplace um, after the fire stops. It's not that there's no, un there's no unburned wood. It's just there's so little of it, the fire can't um, be sustainable. It can't spread effectively. Um, and so it is with the infection. You out. Yes. Um, could you zoom out the slides a little bit? I think it's a bit too close. Uh, sorry, zoom out of the slides. Um, could you please zoom out the slides a little bit? Because I think it's a bit too close. I can't see the whole thing. Oh, that's what it. Okay. Are other people seeing the whole slide or are you also? I see it? the whole slide. Yeah, we can see the whole slide. Uh, um, I see the whole slide. Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering, if, uh, uh, so I, I welcome the request. Uh, that's very important to speak up. But I'm wondering if there's something on your client side of Zoom that whereby you've zoomed in. I know in like my phone version, I can, you know, I do the normal finger squeeze thing and, and like it, um, it can zoom in and zoom out. And maybe you just need to zoom out via that. I think it, it sounds like it's not on the, it's not on my side. It's, I think it's on the client side. It's on, on the side of the viewer. Um, whatever. Okay. Thanks, Professor. Okay. Yeah, no, thanks. Um, okay. Um, and we said that, you know, a key throttle here was the susceptible fraction. Like that's the key, um, um, the key limiter here for how it spreads. If the number of people that are susceptible drops beyond a certain point, uh, it, the infection can't spread sustainably. It dies out. Each person, each infective can't even infect one stinking infective before they recover. They can't even replace themselves with someone. Um, and the outflow is greater than the inflow. So the, the key throttle is this susceptible fraction. We even call it F, the fraction that are susceptible. Um, and at this point, the fraction that are susceptible is equal to one over the basic reproductive number. What is the basic reproductive number? Who can state that? Uh, who can say what when we say basic reproductive number r0 what is that can anyone give a, a pithy characterization of what that is even rough anyone uh, contacts per unit time 
times uh, prayer discordant contact times uh, average duration of infection. Okay. So, so that, that is what it is mathematically for this particular model. But conceptually, what does this mean, uh, R0? That denotes, in, for, if someone talks to you about the, the, the basic reproductive number or R0 or R0, what, is that, what does that mean? Like, what, what's the meaning of that in general? Anyone? It's the number of... Of people that the initial uh, person who was infected uh, inf uh, get uh, infectious. Uh, that's right. It's so if you have an initial infective, um, it's the number of people they will infect before their recovery, but in a very special condition. What's that condition? That everyone around them is what? It's susceptible. Susceptible. It's, uh, susceptible. Yes, exactly. Uh, thank you for the stentorian characterization of it. Um, so, so that's exactly right. Susceptible. Um, okay. Good. Um, okay. Um, now, um, uh, you know, I will note that um, if the basic reproductive number is less than one. It will just go down immediately to um, uh, there won't be an outbreak. If, an, if the basic reproductive number is greater than one, um, let's suppose it's two. One person becomes inf infects two people before they retire, so to speak. Those two infect two more, each infect two more before they retire. It goes two to four to eight, 16, and you get this exponential growth like that. By contrast, if it's less than one, and by the way, that leads to a situation in state space where, remember in state space, we have susceptible here, infected here. So we're depicting at any time what state the system is in, how many susceptibles there are, how many infectives there are, um, for example. And here, um, what we see is that it started here. Um, a disease-free equilibrium. We had 1,500 susceptibles and we had just one infective. And then it proceeded. You had fewer and fewer susceptibles and more infectives, fewer and fewer susceptibles, more infectives, fewer and fewer susceptibles, more infectives, until this point where the basic reproductive number equals one, the inflow equals the outflow, et cetera. And at that point, you still get fewer and fewer susceptibles after that, but you get fewer infectives because each infective can't even infect one person before they recover. The outflow is greater than the inflow and it comes down here. That's the case of an outbreak. That's this case. But the other possibility is the basic reproductive number is less than one are from, from the start. The, the initial person doesn't even infect one infective before they recover and it comes down like this. It just drops from the start. Um, it starts with one person infected. That's the index infective. But in general, they don't even replace themselves. Now, in practice, they might, you know, they might infect one other person, but that person is unlikely to even replace themselves. So one way or the other, it's going to come down over time. It's not going to spread. It's not going to be sustainable. It's like starting a fire if you've got all wet wood, um, you know, wet wood that's just waterlogged. Um, <coughs> you know, you might be able to catch a little sliver on, of it, but you're not going to be able to, you know, catch the whole log on fire or something. Uh, and in that situation, you know, maybe you have one initial infective, 1,500 susceptibles. They're surrounded by susceptibles, but that one infective isn't even going to infect one person before they recover. And so the number of susceptibles will, um, will maybe it will come down slightly, but um, uh, but, you know, the infectives will go to zero here. Um, now, why um, could uh, basic reproductive number um, go to um, be less than one? Well, remember, basic reproductive number for this model is C times beta times mu. It was said earlier. Um, and um, it bears noting, like, this could be small. Uh, give me some reasons why, at a practical level, um, uh, you uh, of how you could make this uh, product small um, by changing C or changing beta or changing mu. What practical thing could you do, for example, that would lower B 
a beta, the, the, the chance per contact between a susceptible and an and a, and a infective, that transmission will be infective. What thing could be done to lower that? Anyone? Strong um, mask wear, such as C95 or yeah. N95s. Yeah, strong mask use. Excellent. How about another thing? Excellent. Uh, what other thing might Social we dance. do? Sorry? Social distancing. Yeah, social distancing. social distancing. So, so maybe I'm I'm talking with you. So it's a contact, but I'm at further distance from you, and so I'm not as likely to be reached by aerosol, any aerosols, and you're not as likely to be reached from me, any aerosols. Yeah, um, that's good. How about another thing that we do? Uh, we we learned to do more, particularly early on. It was quite uh, it was quite emphasized in the outbreak. These days, less so because we don't think it spreads. We think it spreads more via aerosols rather than surfaces. What do we do? We wash hands. Wash our hands more. Yeah, Hygi hygienic measures generally affect beta. Um, how about C? What could be what could be done to lower C? Um, the contacts per unit time someone has. Mm -hmm. uh, lockdown and uh, lockdown. That's right. Um, so. If people stay at home, for example, right? Um, um, their C could be lower. Um, if they are asked not to go to gatherings, C could be lower. If they're asked not to go to big gatherings, C could be lower. Um, how about mu? What is mu? This is what? How, what they stay infected. How it begins with L, it ends with a G. It has an O and an N in it. How long? How long, exactly. Yeah. Um, and... Um, how long they stay infected. This is the duration of infection. Um, and um, how could we lower that? Anyone say? How could we lower the, the duration they stay able to spread the virus? How could we lower that? Hmm. Using exactly. medicine. Yeah, we could use medicine. There's actually Paxlovid, which, which actually, if you take it, so lowers if you're infected. If you know that's soon enough, you could take it. And it will lower your viral load level so dramatically it lowers your chance of, of transmitting the infection by a factor of 10. Um, it's like certain HIV medications for HIV AIDS, which, which lower your viral load level and, um, and, and almost eliminate risk of transmission. Uh, so that's one way. What's another way we could through public health measures? Anyone? Um, quarantine. Yeah. So if we do contact tracing, we find people who are circulating. Um, we can stop them from circulating. We, we, we ask them to isolate because they're found. We find them through testing. Um, you know, we require them to get tested before they come to the gym or we find they're infected. And so then they go in and isolate or we, we find them through contact tracing because they had contact with another person who was infected. And so we, we bring them in, we, we get them to, um, uh, we, we have them isolate or quarantine without even testing them. And, um, and so there, you could be made smaller. So if we can make it less than one, um, it, it won't be sustainable. The bug will, will die up. But I'd like to talk now about a different matter. I'd like to talk about a situation where infection is circulating and where there's waning of immunity. Um, can anyone give me an infection where um, if, you're, if you're infected and you recover that you do not you do not have lifelong immunity. Well, maybe I'll ask first. How about one where you do, it's believed to have lifelong immunity. Can anyone mention an infection where you, you're, you're, it actually seems once you're infected and recovered, you're infect, you're, your immunity is likely pretty much lifelong. Anyone? Chicken pox. Chicken pox. Chicken pox is pretty good. Um, pretty, um, well, that's a, that's a strong statement, but don't quote me on that. But it's, uh, chicken pox is, is pretty close to that. Although uh, when people's immunity wanes very late in life, there, there may be some chance they could get chickenpox again. More typically, they'll get what? Anyone? Someone who got chickenpox early in life? Shingles, I think. Shingles, shingles. It's the same bug and it pops back out. It's living in them and it pops back out and it comes out as shingles and that can spread. Um, and, and in fact, kids can get chickenpox from the shingles from grandma. Um, you know, that, that she has. Um, these bugs are wily things. Um, um, but how about, how about one, and, but there is one that even more is, is lifelong than chicken pox. Anyone? 
it begins with an M. It, it ends with an S. It strikes kids. Measles. measles. Measles is pretty much lifelong. You, you're infected. You're not going to get it again. And I, I even heard really any, even, even among the, those with weak immune systems, I even heard of dual measles infection. Maybe it occurs, but it's so little observed epidemiologically, we don't really consider it. But give me an infection where there is loss of immunity and you can get reinfected. The flu. Flu is one, yeah. It, it mutates faster than almost any other bug except HIV AIDS, I was told by a flu, um, uh, flu uh, uh, immunologist. Um, how, about, how about another one? Uh, herpes? Herpes virus, yes, you can get it. And that actually comes out again. And, and yes, you can get it again. In fact, STIs, uh, um, um, herpes is a virus, but, but uh, gonorrhea, chlamydia, these are bacterial and you can get them uh, again um, um, to great painfulness. Um, uh, so um, absolutely, you can get it again. And in fact, guess what? Guess what you can get again? Um, Pretty easily, COVID guess what? Yes, COVID-19. COVID. Um, and, and, and in South Africa, the records from Pulium, uh, the rec uh, 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 Pulium et al, uh, a, a paper, they documented, you know, people have gotten four successive times COVID-19 and Omicron is particularly evasive. So with, with um, some bugs, um, it's because they mutate and flu mutates. And guess what? COVID-19 is mutating. And that's what allows it to kind of effectively lose immunity and you get, you get infected again. Other bugs, you don't, don't have sustained immunity, it seems. It's a very short-term matter. Um, it's not so much that it mutates, things like gonorrhea and chlamydia, for example. Um, in any case, um, uh, in herpes simplex, uh, often it, it stays, uh, stays within the person, just like chickenpox. Um, anyway, I could go on on this for a long time. Um, uh, so when we have this, you know, it leads to this extra term. Um, these terms should be familiar. Um, what is this term reflecting? This term here. I know it's a, a mouthful of Greek letters, um, but um, what is it? What flow is it reflecting in the model? You notice it's here and here. What is it reflecting? What flow? Anyone? Fraction of infectious. Yeah, it's, it's with the infection flow. How about this one here? What's that reflecting? It's a flow out of I and into R. So which one is it here? It's labeled what? Recovery. Mm, mm. Um, well spoken, young man. Um, uh, now, what is this flow? Omega times R. What is that flow? Guess what? It flows out of R and into S. What is that one? Waning of immunity. Yeah, waning of immunity. Thank exactly. You. Yeah. Um, by the way, when I'm saying flow out of, you could tell it by the minus, and this has an implicit plus, right? Um, so they kind of come in pairs if it's going between stocks, and this is coming out of R and into S. So that's kind of how you learn to read them. Now, here's the thing. Um, a, a system like this is not going to have this sort of um, it's not going to have this sort of situation. Uh, and in fact, I asked you to build this model before, and you ran it. And you saw something quite different. Does anyone remember what you saw? What did you see differently? What did you see that was not like, sorry, not like that? Mm -hmm. What was different? Um, the susceptibles uh, had a, um, a standing waveform to it. It did yeah. just flatten it. Yeah. Um, susceptibles underwent a wave. And in fact, there were oscillations in infections as well. Um, and, um, you know, really I should, um, I should probably, if, if, I, if I had planned ahead and wasn't giving a talk right before this, I would have um, uh, pulled, this, um, pulled this out right here, but um, let's go, um, let's go uh, pull this out. Um, I won't do it with the model I've asked you to, to run for um, Thursday, that's that's for you to do. Um, but we have something like this, and you know we could run it with the baseline case. And um, here we go. This is a model, basically like you had done. And you notice it went up, 
and came down and it looks quite a lot like that that uh, that one that we saw earlier at first um uh because nobody is waning immunity yet <laughs> you know there are very few people waning immunity yet whoa um and then it kind of comes down and then it hey then it goes up again and comes down again and depending on the parameters this may go to higher levels and but it's approaching what's called an endemic equilibrium an equilibrium where it's in balance um at this state um this i'm showing new i'm showing infectives here uh infectious people this is what i'm showing so uh that's flat oh oh no it's not that. okay at time 350 it's still alternating at very small levels it's just uh uh, between like 30,000 and, and 29,000. If I continue to run it, oh, okay. I ran it to as far as it can ran, run. Um, so I, I think we'll have to, to, to just leave it to your imagination. But it will be going in, it will be zeroing in on a certain value. It's just fluctuating at very, very small levels. Um, the fact that it's almost flat means what is almost equal to what? Anyone? Whoa, this thing is jumping around. What is almost equal to what? The fact that this stock is is almost flat would be an inflow equal uh, outflow. Yeah, inflow equals outflow. These two are equal. Um, will be equal. So this guy here, twenty nine sixty nine, is approximately twenty nine twelve. And as you run it, it will kind of, you know, it'll sort of oscillate around a little bit, but get closer and closer to the equilibrium value. Um, so that's that's the idea. It goes towards an equilibrium towards what equilibrium does it go? Well, we can solve this thing. Ladies and gentlemen, riddle me this. Um, uh, under what conditions will this system be in equilibrium? When we say that this is in balance, that it's in the state of equilibrium, um, uh, let's suppose it's just an SIR model. This is a more complicated one. Uh, but imagine it's just this SAR model that uh, we are depicting here. At equilibrium, what is the case? Anyone? If it's in total balance, the whole system, what is going to, uh, what are the, how is the susceptible changing? How is the infective changing? And how is the recovered changing? All, I'll ask it that way. Uh -huh. All, flow, all flows uh, be equal together. Okay. So the, Outflow for each of these stocks, what equals what? The um, infection, infection recovery and waning of immun immunity would be equal. Okay. Oh, good. Good. Yeah. So you took it further. For each of these stocks at the least, the value of the stock is, is doing what? Is it changing at equilibrium? No, it's they are equal. no, it's they are equal. Constant. It's constant. So the inflow equals the outflow for each. And what um, Zainab said further is that, you know, she observed that, gosh, if this equals this and this equals this, you know, if we're, if we're, and this equals this, uh, um, they, they all must be equal. <laughs> you know, this must equal this, must equal that for them all to be an equal. If any one of them were off, if, you know, Waning of immunity were less than recovery, recover will be going down. Uh, if waning of immunity was different from infection, susceptible will be, will be changing. Um, if infection were different from recovery, this will be changing. So they all, the, the, the rate of change of each of these must be what? The rate of change of each of these must be what value? The derivative with respect to time of each of these must be, Zero. Rate zero. 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 Good. Okay. Now um, we're we're going to impose this, but first we're going to do something clever. We can recognize that look, S plus I plus R, like there's only two choices here. If we know S and I and we know the total population, we know R, right? There, there's only, as we say, two degrees of freedom. Like if, if we know that total population is just some constant, if you give me any two of these, I'll tell you the third one. Um, because the third one is just the total population minus the sum of the other two. 
So I would say, you know, to solve for the conditions under which this is imbalanced and that is imbalanced um, are enough because I'll find out a value of S and I for which this is imbalanced and I can get the value of R that comes from that. There's only one value of R that's possible, which is initial population minus the bounce susceptible minus the bounce uh, value of, of infective. So in short, to figure out the state of the system, I just need to solve for susceptible and infective. I don't need to solve for recover. I can just express recovered as the difference between the total population and 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 these other two. Uh, recovered uh, S plus I plus R will always equal M. Um, that's what the population doesn't change. The initial population is the population from then on. Um, it's the initial population, it's the forever population. Okay. Um, so I can represent it just with this. If I, if I just represent it with this, I can give you R for free. You know, um, uh, in short, I can take this system, which has three things, and I can just boil it down and, and just focus on the top ones, because the third one, I can always calculate R from, from here. So if I do that, um, now I can solve. I want to find the values of S and I. I want to find the equilibrium point. I want to find this point of, of S, I, and R where the system is in balance, where it's not changing anymore. And how am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to solve for the values of S, I, and R for which the system's in balance. But we know R I can get from S and I. So all I have to do is solve for S and I um, for which it's in balance. When I say it's in balance, the, the change of each of these is equal to what? Is equal to, is equal to what? You said zero. it earlier. That when it's zero. in balance, the zero. change. Yeah, zero. zero. The rate of change of these. They're not going up, they're not going down. They're not gaining people per unit time. They're not losing people per unit time. It's equal to zero. So we can take this system and we can solve for a situation where S dot, that's this one, equals I dot, equals this one. In other words, this is not changing. The number that are leaving is the same as the number coming in. So S dot is zero. The rate of change of S is zero. The rate of change of I is zero. The number of people recovering from infection is the same as the number of people getting infected. I, I dot equals zero. Um, and if I do that, um, uh, then um, I can solve. And so in order to do this, this is called solving for equilibria. I'm solving for the values of S and I, where S and I will be in equilibrium. Like, what is the value? Like, what fraction of the population remains susceptible in equilibrium? What's the fraction of the people that will remain uninfected when Omicron is you know, endemic. Um, well, um, we want to look. Um, so we're trying to find when, okay, so we want to solve for this in terms of S and I. Let's do that. Okay, we're going we're gonna to take, okay, I dot equals zero. Okay, if I dot equals zero, this whole thing equals zero. And that's really tempting because I can pull this I out. So this thing, that's this, equals zero, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I can pull this I out, right? I out in front. Um, and this is gonna be C times uh, beta times S minus one over, um, one over, over tau. And I'm going to multiply it through. Um, so, you know, we multiply it by, by N on both sides. Um, to get rid of this pesky n and the denominator, and I'm going to multiply it by tau on both sides to get rid of the pesky tau. And so what you get is this. Um, I could have expressed it here as i times c times i times one over n times beta times s minus one over tau. Um, and then you could recognize this it just comes directly for us. Um, we're just multiplying on both sides by tau n uh, here. Um, and uh, this yields um, uh, two cases, okay? So I'm trying to find 
So I'm trying to find a case where I dot equals zero. Well, this is the condition for I dot equals zero. Well, that can occur in two different ways. What's one way? What's one value of I for which this thing equals zero? Can anyone tell me? It's kind of staring us in the face. What's a value of I for which this expression, this formula equals zero? I if equal I, is zero. Ah, ah. Or uh, I equal not zero. It's not, yeah. So if I equal uh, zero, two, this uh, is zero. That's right. So so one possibility, exactly. So one possibility is I equals zero. Great. Um, so that's one possibility. Um, and the other possibility is I is not zero, in which case this thing has to be zero because somehow we have to get this time set to be zero. And if this guy isn't zero, this will have to be zero. Um, and so we're going to deal with two cases. The first case is I is zero. Okay, so if, if I equals zero, okay, well, we know this is zero, right? I is zero, okay, that's zero. But if I is zero, then we can solve this because we know this whole thing equals zero because not only is I not changing, S is not changing. So we know this is we're solving for this one, this is zero. Now we know I is zero, that's gonna knock out this one and this one, and we can solve what S is. So, um, so we're gonna look for a case where S dot equals zero. So S dot will equal zero when this thing equals zero. All I'm doing is I'm copying it from right here. Um, that's this formula right here. Um, uh, this is this right here formula. This is um, this right here formula. Um, okay, so if S equals S dot equals zero, um, we know this equals zero. And we know I equals zero. That's, that's these two cases. We're examining this case. Okay, I equals zero. So we can simplify this. This goes away. This goes away. Um, and we have omega times n minus s, right? Um, equals zero. What is that telling s must be? If, if omega, if we know omega, the rate of waning of immunity is greater than zero. And we know n is greater than zero. We don't want to be boring and examine an empty population. What is this saying S is equal to? S equals what? Under what condition will this equal to zero? If this is not zero and this is not zero, guess what S has to be for this whole thing to equal to zero? S equals what? N. S equals N. 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 S equals N. Okay, so I equals zero, S equals N. What is that telling us about the population? Everyone is what? What is N? It's the total population size. So everyone is what? Susceptible. 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 Nobody is infected. And recovered is, well, it's N minus S minus I. It's just the rest of the people. Everyone's already, it's already susceptible. So nobody's left over to be recovered. So it's also zero. In short, this is what we call the disease-free equilibrium. It's like everyone's just ripe for infection, right? <laughs> They're all susceptible. This is one boring situation under which um, all of these are zero, right? If you have nobody infected, <laughs> everyone susceptible, um, then these can be imbalanced totally in a sort of a trivial way. Um, you know, there's um, essentially everyone is, is here, no infections are taking place, there's nobody to recover, so there's nobody coming in. So S dot will be equal to zero, no infections, no recovery coming in. No, no waning of immunity coming in, rather. Um, I dot will be zero because I is zero. R dot will be zero because, well, there's, because R is zero. There's no one recovering, and there's no one waning of immunity, and I is zero. So, so that's a kind of um, simple case in which it's a disease free equilibrium, right? Oh, uh, and that's kind of a boring case in which there's no, you know, um, that's an equilibrium of the system, a system which is in balance. Now, if R naught is greater than zero, if, if, if this infection can spread, if it comes in, that's a combustible situation. That's a situation where if the infection comes in, if someone flies in with COVID-19 into the Saskatoon airport, we're in trouble because it will spread. Everyone is susceptible, but it is a, it's kind of a, Metastable equilibrium, I and mean, it's an equilibrium where nothing's changing. It's just ripe for a fire, right? Um, it's just ripe for for a combustion to occur uh, if R naught is greater than zero. 
Let's look at the other equilibrium. And this equilibrium, ladies and gentlemen, will be more interesting. This equilibrium, ladies and gentlemen, will be an equilibrium which is endemic. That will be associated with this case where the infection stays. It stays you know, established. It circulates stealthily uh, and, and infects people. And, um, you know, will just be remaining much as, um, you know, flu remains and much as, um, you know, bits of measles and pertussis and, and chickenpox these days remain um, as common colds remain, it will remain circulate. Okay, um, so now let's look at this case of the endemic equilibrium. Um, so here, remember we have two cases. This is the I not equal to zero case. Remember we, we looked at this case. Um, now we're looking at this case. These two cases came out of solving I dot equals zero. We got two cases, one where I is zero trivially and the other where I is not zero and therefore this thing must be equal to zero. Uh, so, um, so, uh, so N here S equals, well, this thing equals, so, so if I is not zero, we can divide by it on both sides. Divide this side by I and that side. We know it's not zero, so we can divide by it. It won't blow up on us. Um, so, so we divide both sides by I and we get C beta S times tau, tau minus N equals zero. Oh boy, that means we just move N to the other side. C beta to S tau equals N. Mm, mm. So what is this saying S must equal to? Well, we just do a bunch of algebra. It's N over C beta tau, right? Just divide these guys over. Um, they could be gals, uh, but uh, divide them over there. And, and this is what we get. Okay, now that's pretty interesting if you think about it. I know it looks like a bunch of algebra, but this is pretty interesting. Because what is this saying about the population? What fraction of the population is susceptible for the endemic equilibrium here? Anyone? What's the fraction of the population that's susceptible? It's what? Remember, N is the total population. So what fraction of it is susceptible? Hmm? One over C beta tau. Exactly, exactly. One over C beta tau. Um, that's the fraction of the population that's susceptible. Now, um, I, I want you to notice something. Here's this model. Um, tau is what I used to call mu, um, that, that kind of mu one, um, which looked, well, it looked like mu. Um, it, it looked like a u. Um, um, Ladies and gentlemen, what's the basic reproductive number of this model? If we have C contacts per unit time, a chance per beta. contact. Yeah, C beta, C beta what? Beta mu. C beta mu. Oh, well, mu there's tau. no mu here. There's a tau instead where it serves as mu. So it's C beta what? Tau. A tau. No, oh, oh, I just called it. I should have been. I was I was a bad boy. I should have called it mu, but I, I didn't. Um, and... And a lesson learned. Um, I'll, I'll go and improve it next time. But uh, C beta uh, tau sorry. is the basic reproductive uh, number. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, tau, tau equal mu in, in Well, in earlier this, I called uh, it mu. When I when I when I was looking at um, I'm a mumble. Um, when I when I did this one, I called it mu. I should have called it tau to be consistent. Um, it's the same. It serves the same purpose. Um, it's the mean time in this state. So you had I over mu here and you know I over mu flowing into here. And that's exactly what we have here for the comparable thing, right? We have minus I over tau and I over tau. It's, it's the same thing, it just goes by a different name. And I would argue, ladies and gentlemen, a rose by any name, other name smells just as sweet. It's really mu. I mean, I, I should have called it mu or, I should have called the other one tau. I should have used the same name. I, I was just inconsistent. But the basic reproductive number for this model, where we happen to use tau to describe this mean time, is what? What is the basic reproductive number for this? It's someone C said beta it tau. 
See better tell. tell. See better tell. That's exactly right. Um, and does this look familiar? What fraction of the population is susceptible at endemic equilibrium? Anyone want to say it? One, one over uh, R, R. Yeah, of the basic R reproductive R number. Yeah, R, no, R one R over R the basic reproductive number. Um, and, you know, we can um, go through and having done this and knowing that this was through solving this one, now we can solve for this one and we kind of crunch through it and we get I equal this. Um, um, it's kind of a, a bit of a slog uh, algebra wise, but basically we're solving S dot equals zero in terms of, we found S, we wanna find I. So we wanna get an equation for I and we'll solve for I. We'll solve, take this and we'll solve for I. And we gotta, uh, you know, we gotta go group the I's the eyes have it and we, we, we group them over here and we do you know, some god awful um, uh, division there, div divide this over there. And basically it's, it's just a matter of kind of grouping things uh, together, okay? Um, and solve for I, it's just high school algebra. And we solve for it and we get this. And this is giving us the fraction of the population that is infective at equilibrium. It's the fraction of the population is omega tau divided by C beta tau times this fraction. And you know these taus um, cancel and it's omega over C beta times this thing here. Um, okay, well, um, that's, uh, that's kind of nice and we can figure out for R. But what's really notable here is that the fraction of the population that is susceptible in equilibrium, this key throttle, is, is one over or not. Um, and why is that? Like, why is it at, at endemic equilibrium? What is it that's the case at endemic equilibrium? Um, what is it that defines it as being endemic equilibrium in terms of infectives? Um, at endemic equilibrium, what will equal what here? Anyone? In There's two ways we can see. Inflow equals outflow, good. And what else, for a given person who's infective, how many people will they recover before they recover? If this is to not go up and not go down, they will need to infect how many people before they recover? Exactly what? One. One exactly. person, one person. They're gonna replace themselves with one person. Mm? Mm? Um, right? And. Uh, and that's exactly what this guarantees. If, if um, we have a situation where um, each infective <laughs> is circulating and they have contact with C people per unit time um, and only a fraction of them, and only one over C beta tau of them are, are, uh, are in fact susceptible, um, and each such susceptible person, they infect beta, um, uh, they have a chance beta of infecting. The number of people they will infect per unit time will be one over tau. Um, it'll be C beta, um, uh, I should really have th this formula here um, up. So if we consider an infective and they are circulating, um, Sorry, a susceptible. Yeah, yeah. If, if we consider an infective and they're circulating, um, they are going to uh, an, a given infective. Uh, it's going to be circulating. The, let's say contact with hundred people per unit time, um, and uh, let's suppose that um, uh, the basic reproductive number is R R zero is let's say four. So um, a fraction of the population one quarter of the population is susceptible. So it'll be C, say 100 people per unit time, times um, uh, uh, one over four um, is the fraction that are susceptible, the S times uh, N, I'm kind of rearranging it to, to consider a given, um, a given uh, uh, infective, times beta chance of infecting them. So overall, they will have, 
per unit time, C times beta times one over basic reproductive number, um, uh, people per unit time, they're infected. But one over the basic reproductive number is one over C beta tau. And so the C will cancel this one, beta will cancel that one, and it'll be one over tau. And guess for how long they're infected? They're infected for how long on average, anyone? For how long are they infected on average? Tau. Tau time. So they're gonna infect one over tau people per unit time. And therefore over the entire course of tau time units, they're gonna infect one stinking person. That's what this guarantees, ladies and gentlemen. This is the level of people around them that are susceptible, fraction of them that are susceptible, whereby it guarantees each infective infects only one person before they recover. Um, normally, they, and this is another way to put it. Normally, an infect, if, if that um, infected person were surrounded by all susceptibles, by definition, how many people would they infect? Hmm? If, if the susceptible, the infected person is surrounded by all susceptibles, by the definition of the basic reproductive number, how many people are they going to infect before they recover? Hmm? So R zero. R zero. They'll infect R zero people in total before they recover and infected. But they're not surrounded by all susceptibles. One over R zero people around them only are, are susceptible. So they'll, in, they'll on average infect the basic reproductive number times one over the basic reproductive number of people. Um, they'll infect one over the basic reproductive number of the people they'd normally infect. Um, so if normally they'd infect four people because the basic reproductive number is four, um, but only a quarter of the people around them are infected, one over four, are, are susceptible rather, they'll only infect one person before they recover because three of those four people are already infected. They're not gonna be able to infect them. And that's why the fact that this fraction of the population remains susceptible guarantees each infective infects one stinking person before they recover. This is just a low enough fraction that are susceptible to ensure they don't infect more than one person to replace themselves. Um, so that's the idea here. Um, okay, um, we don't have time to go over this, but I think I'm going to ask you to undertake a challenge problem, um, which is going to have you solve for a case here. So we solve for two cases, one where um, uh, we're basically solving for equilibrium. Under what conditions is this an equilibrium? The obvious one or the one that's less interesting perhaps, although very important, is the one where everything's in balance because everyone's here <laughs> and there's no infectives. There's no one to get infected or there's nobody to do the infecting. Um, there's nobody here to recover. There's nobody here to wane immunity. That was one of the, the, the equilibria. The other equilibrium was everything was in balance. And as Zainab noted, infection equals recovery, recovery equals waning of immunity, waning immunity equals infection. All those were equal. And that was the one uh, that we had found. And how did we find this? How did we locate these equilibria? Well, we took the original equations, we simplified them by saying, we don't need to worry about the last one. If we just solve for S and I, we can calculate R as n minus s minus i. We solve for s and i at which the system will be in equilibrium. And we found those two cases. This one was the disease-free one. This one was the endemic one. And we had to do some crunching, but essentially we found this is the endemic fraction. And by a little bit more high school algebra, we found the fraction that uh, are infective at equilibrium. And you could subtract that the sum of S and I from R to find this one. Um, so this is a general pattern. And I'm going to ask you to try undertaking this for another example um, so that you can get your hand at it. And um, why are we doing this? Because this allows us, instead of just running simulations, it allows us to calculate in symbolic terms 
how does the fraction that remain susceptible or remain infective or the remain recovered for the endemic value or for different equilibria, how does that change based on the parameters? And we could ask, suppose we could lower C by an intervention, or suppose we could lower beta by masking. Suppose we could lower C by social dis by um, you know, working from home, uh, for example, or from avoiding going to gatherings. Suppose we could lower the mean time infectious. How would that affect the fraction of people who remain susceptible in equilibrium? How would it affect the fraction of people that are infective in equilibrium or that are recovered in equilibrium? So I'm going to ask you to go through a similar process. Okay, um, great. Um, so uh, we've gone a bit over time. Uh, I want to thank you for your uh, for your uh, attention here, and I see lots of wonderful feedback in this um, uh, in this chat. Um, much appreciated. Um, I'm noting the many people who. <laughs> who contributed to it. And I'm glad Omar will remember my utterance for at the time of the, of the final exam. Every year, I wish more students had, had remembered it. OK, um, that's all we have for today. Um, as always, um, I, uh, I ask you to be safe. Remember those wastewater numbers. Remember that you may be done with the pandemic, but the pandemic is not done with you. Um, and uh, soon enough, the skies will be brighter. Soon enough, uh, the, the, the balmy winds of spring will come in. Soon enough, um, we will have uh, low enough uh, infection numbers to circulate. But until then, take extra precautions to be safe um, because getting sick with this bug is no fun, even if you're vaccinated, okay? Um, and you can bring it to others by accident. So. So be extra cautious, uh, test early, test often, and um, uh, I look forward to getting together when it's a wee bit safer after, after the break, when it's a lot safer after the break, actually. Okay, um, as always, uh, also, I will be holding office hours, and I look forward to meeting those of you who would like to dialogue there, whether about more general matters or about the assignment or about, um, you know, um, the, the particular lecture material or projects. Um, and I'll take a short break um, and we'll reconvene office hours from this very seat. Thank you very much for your attention. Stay safe. And I look forward to seeing you on Thursday. Don't forget the, um, the take home exercise for Thursday. Okay, take care there. Thanks very much.